Hello, Joe here. I'm a musician, I'm a composer, and I like talking about music right here on this channel for your eyeballs to consume. So last week, I talked about the history of architecture and how buildings have affected composers and music throughout the centuries. However, today, I wanted to go on a more practical investigation and take you around the buildings and locations that I know to have had a huge influence on music, whether classical, popular, or jazz. So I'm currently filming this from an undisclosed location, but as you may have already worked out, I study music in London. So I will be taking you on a tour of all the various music schools, concert halls, and general musical places in London that I think you might care about. Let's go! Woo! So the first building, or more accurately set of buildings, we'll be visiting, and the closest one to me, is the Barbican Estate. The Barbican is a performing arts and residential centre in the City of London, and the largest of its kind in Europe. The Barbican hosts classical, contemporary and jazz performances, movie screenings and art exhibitions, and, in my humble opinion, is one of the coolest places in the world. The Barbican Centre and Estate was constructed in the 60s and 70s in the brutalist architectural style. And today is the home of not only 4,000 residents, but also the BBC Symphony Orchestra and the London Symphony Orchestra. The centre combines its exposed concrete architectural style with lots of natural beauty like lakes, waterfronts, hanging plants and gardens. The residential centre even has its own giant greenhouse called the Barbican Conservatory, which is the second largest of its kind in London. Now we swiftly move on to the next stop on our tour, Denmark Street, Soho. Commonly referred to as the Tin Pan Alley of London, Denmark Street was originally developed in the 17th century, named after Prince George of Denmark. But since the 1950s, the street has been strongly associated with popular British music. All manner of famous musicians have performed, recorded or been published here, including Paul Simon, David Bowie and Jimi Hendrix. Just down the street is the famous Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club, one of the most famous jazz clubs in the UK, opened in 1959 by the eponymous Ronnie Scott, a famous English jazz saxophonist. Next on our tour is the Royal College of Music and the adjacent Royal Albert Hall. Located in the bougie, rich bitch end of central London, South Kensington, although to be honest, central London is 100% rich bitch, the Royal Albert Hall was built in 1871 as a permanent location for all the wonders of the Victorian Great Exhibition, hosted in Hyde Park next door. The Royal Albert Hall is a very famous location for musicians, classical and non-classical, having hosted the music of pretty much every famous musician in the Western Hemisphere at some point. Just across the road is the Royal College of Music. Built in 1883, RCM is a world-renowned music school, one of the top 10 in the world, <clears throat> along with Guildhall, and has produced a great deal of fantastic musicians, including Coleridge Taylor, Jacob Collier, and Sarah Fox. Now, as a Guildhall student, I must give a disclaimer that I am heavily biased against RCM. There is a playful rivalry between us, and when I applied there, they were lovely, but I feel obliged to let you know that Guildhall School of Music and Drama is a vastly superior school to RCM in every single way, and if you study RCM, you're a complete and utter fucking wank. Moving along on our tour, and moving slightly out of central London, we come to St John's Wood, a district in the city of Westminster, and the location of the extremely famous Abbey Road. Now, if you don't know what Abbey Road is, first of all, do you live in a hole in the ground? Second of all, Abbey Road is the street that the Beatles named one of their most famous albums after. And this is the titular Abbey Road Zebra Crossing, used in the very famous and very much parodied album cover. 
Over here are the Abbey Road Studios, a set of recording studios within which artists from the Sex Pistols to Freddie Mercury to Kate Bush have all recorded. I didn't film the multiple times I tried to break in and meet Adele. I love you Adele, you got so skinny. And that brings us to the end of our tour of the best musical locations in London. Now this is by no means an exhaustive list, uh, so if there's any places I've missed, don't hesitate to tell me in the comments. I will probably read and respond. Please like the video, subscribe and donate to my Patreon. $10 a month will get your name at the end of the video. Goodbye! <laughs>